So factors of 12. Who has some factors of 12? Kevin? 2 and 6. Factors of 6? 2 and 3. Okay, I'm going to circle our leaves. And then I'm going to box in our buddies. So the ones that have buddies here are our twos. The twos come out front. Two times three, what doesn't have a buddy, is our two, and it stays locked up. And then we go over to our 27. So 27 has factors of, who can tell me factors of 27? So nine and three. And then we have three and three. It is a three. Thanks. There we go. Okay, so three didn't have a buddy in the first one. Here we are going to circle the ones that have leaves, our bottom of our branches. The ones that have buddies are our threes. The three comes out front. Three times four. What doesn't have a buddy is our three. So now we can perform that multiplication. What is two times three? Six. Six square root of three plus... 3 times 4, square root of 3. Since they both have the same radical, we can add our coefficients. So 12 plus 6, 18, 18 square root of 3. Whoa. Okay, next up we have 125. Okay, so 125. Who can tell me factors of 125? Five and 25. Okay, factors of 25? 5 and 5. I'm going to circle our leaves. Those are all of our 5s. I'm going to box in the ones that have buddies. It's my 5, so I have 5 times 5. Square root of the one that doesn't have a buddy is the 5. Over here we have 250. Factors of 250. 25 and 10, thank you. 25 goes to 5 and 5. 10 goes to 2 and 5. We're going to box in the ones that have buddies after I circle our leaves. Okay, box in the buddies. So we have 5s that have buddies. So subtract 5. It doesn't have a buddy, stays locked up. So we have 2 times 5, which is 10. And then our last part here is we have plus 10. Okay, so 5 times 5 for our first part here, for our coefficient. 25 square root of 5 minus 5 square root of 10 plus 10. Do any of those have the same radical so we can combine it? Nope. So we box it in and that's our answer. And then our last bell ringer, we have 8. Factors of 8. 2 and 4. Factors of 4. 2 and 2. I'm going to circle our leaves, the bottom of our branches. Those are our 2s. I'm going to box in the one that has a buddy. So over here I have 2 times 2, square root of 2. Okay, and then we're going to go to 15. Factors of 15. 3 and 5. Do either of those have a buddy? No. Nope, so it stays the same. So minus 2, square root of 15. So my last step is just to multiply that out. 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 2 minus 2, square root of 15. And they don't have the same radical, so we box it in. Products of radicals. Multiplying radicals, what we have to do is our first step, multiply coefficients together. So the numbers out front of the radicals, the coefficient, you multiply those. The second step is multiply the numbers under the radicals. And then the third step is to simplify. So bring it down to the factors um, and the prime numbers. See which ones have buddies. Bring it out front. Multiply the ones that don't have buddies back together. Our first part says if it's under the radical being multiplied, we multiply the numbers inside it. So our first one, we have the square root of 3 times 2. What's the square, or what's 3 times 2? 6. You see, if you looked at that, the factors would be 3 and 2. They wouldn't have a buddy, so it stays square root of 6. Our next one up, we have square root of 3 times the square root of 6, which is the same thing as the square root of 3 times 6. What's the um, 3 times 6? Okay, 18 has factors that might have buddies, so we're going to look at it. So what are some factors of 18? 9 and 2. So I'm going to go like this, 9 and 2. Factors of 9? 3 and 3. I'm going to circle our leaves, the bottom of my branches. So the ones that have buddies are just the 3s. 
So the three comes out front. What doesn't have a buddy is the two. It stays locked up. Whoa. Okay. After that, we have a square. So we have the square root of two squared. Do you remember what a square does? It means it's the same number multiplied by itself. So we multiply the insides, which gives us a square root of four. Four has um, factors of two and two. You circle the buddies. We're left with just two. So when we talked previously about squares and square roots, I talked to you guys about how they are inverses of each other. So if you have a square of a square root, the answer is going to be what's on the inside. Okay? So it's like adding two and then subtracting two. It takes you back to where you started. Squaring and square rooting will take you back to the number that you have on that inside. And then our next one up, we have three square root of two times three square root of two. So I'm going to write that out. Three square root of two times three square root of two. So we start with multiplying our coefficients. Our coefficients in this case are the three. Three times three is nine. We multiply the stuff in our radicals. Two times two is four. We branch out the four. It has factors of two. I'll circle my leaves. Two and two. Box in the ones that have a buddy. What has a buddy? The twos. The two comes out. So now we have nine times two, which is 18. Okay, after that, we have one last problem on this page. Are you ready for it? Okay, so we have five square root of three. This is cubed now, five square root of three times five square root of three. So our first step is to uh, multiply our coefficients. So that's gonna be five times five times five. Can anybody tell me what that is? Which, how much? 125, you guys got that really quick. 125, square root of three times three times three. Nine, 27. 27, yep, so nine times three would then give you that 27. We're gonna expand on the 27. Factors of 27. Nine and three, I'm gonna go sideways on this so I have space. Nine goes to three and three. I'm gonna circle our buddies. What doesn't have a buddy is my three. What does have buddies are my other threes. So I'm going to come over here. You end up with 3 times 125. Square root of what doesn't have a buddy is my 3. What's 3 times 125? 375? Square root of 3. Now we're moving on to quotients of radicals. A quotient, and remember that's division. So we can't leave radicals in the denominator. So if you have a square root in our denominator, we're going to have to multiply to get rid of it. The way we do that is we multiply with whatever square roots in the denominator to the numerator of the denominator. We call that rationalizing. And then after that, we have to put them in that simplified form. So factor trees, get them to lowest terms, figure out if there's any shared factors, and go on from there. Anything that can be taken out of our numerator and our denominator? So there's no coefficient to our numerator, so there's nothing I can take out, and there's no radical in our denominator. So for this one, he's correct, Demarcus told us nothing's changing. Is it just five and six, six and seven? So this is, I believe so, six and seven. Um, so this one just stays the same. Nothing we can do to it. So square root of uh, five over three. Our second one, though, is there anything in common between five and six? No, there's not. So we know that this is the same thing as the square root of five over the square root of six. We can't have a square root in our denominator. So we have to rationalize it. So rationalizing the denominator means we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of whatever is in the denominator. So the square root in our denominator is 6. So we multiply the numerator and denominator by square root of 6. So then when we multiply our stuff in the numerator, we have 5 times 6, which is square root of 30. In our denominator, we have the square root of 6 times 6, which is 36. Okay, I'm going to do those down here, 30 and 36. What are our factors of 30? 3 and 10. Factors of 10? 2 and 5. You were doing the other one. Do any of those have any buddies? Nope. So we keep the square root of 30 in our numerator. Okay, now Kevin. Yeah. 6 and 6. Okay, up until this point, I haven't told you this. If you can identify that it's a perfect square, I won't make you can continue on. You have to box it in, and you have to tell me it's a perfect square. If not... I want you to show the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So you could stop there, or you're going to do three and two, two and three. Circle our buddies, circle our buddies. And then that becomes six 
So you have the square root of 30 over 6. So here we have a radical in the numerator and denominator. There's nothing in common between the 3 and the 2. So we multiply the numerator and the denominator by what our denominator is. What's our denominator? The square root of 2. So now we end up with 3 times 2, which is? Yep, 2 times 2, which is? Thank you, ma'am. So 6 goes to 3 and 2. None of them have buddies, so it stays the square root of 6. What happens with the square root of 4? It has 2s that have a buddy, so 2 comes out. So we end up with a square root of 6 over 2. Our next one up, you again see that you have a 6 and a, a square root of 3. Even though 3 and 6 have common factors, they're not in the same position. One's under a radical and one's not. So what we have to do is rationalize our denominator first. So we have to multiply the top and the bottom by what? Three. Square root of 3, yep. Yeah. So in our numerator, there is nothing that has a radical. So we just combine those, 6 times the square root of 3, because the coefficient on the square root of 3 is 1. And then the denominator, we have square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is the square root of 9. So 3 and 3 break down. We buddy those up. They come out. We end up with the 6 over times the square root of 3 over 3. Now that you have numbers that aren't under a square root, we're going to see if anything's in common between those. Does 3 go into 6? Yes, it does. It goes into it twice. So it goes into it two times. 3 goes into a 1. One time, we end up with 2 square root of 3 as our final answer. Okay, so we have square roots over both fractions, right? So can you take 2 and 5 and simplify those at all? No. 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 Can we do anything with the 8 and the 10? Yes. Potentially, right? Um, how many times? What goes into both of those? Two. Two. 2. So 2 goes into 10 5 times. 2 goes into 8 how many times? Four times. Okay, so now I'm able to create a fraction underneath my radical that we combine these. So it's going to be 2 times 5, and then over 5 times 4. So we just multiplied those together. Now that we're here, we can look and see what we have in common. Is there anything in the numerator and the denominator that are in common? Five. The 5. So E, getting rid of the 5s. Can we do anything with that 2 and 4? Yeah. We can simplify that. How many times does 2 go into 2? How many times does 2 go into 4? Okay, so in our numerator, we end up with 1 over 2. Okay. So that is essentially what we did. So we cross canceled with the 5s, and then we cross canceled with the 2s and the 4. Where did you get 5 times 4 on the bottom? 5 times 4 we got it because we took out a 2, and both these which gave us 5 and 4, and so we multiplied 5 oh. times 4. Okay. I'm reflected in a minute. Okay, so let's finish this one up. Can we have a radical in our denominator? No. no. So we can rewrite this as the square root of 1 over the square root of 2. We can't have the square root of 2, so we multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. The numerator becomes 1 times 2, which is just square root of 2. And the denominator becomes the square root of 4. 4 goes to 2 and 2. They have buddies that come outside. We end up with the square root of 2 over 2. So that's I'm at the bottom right here with the I just drew the square root of 2. Okay, so here again we have two fractions. What I'm going to do this time is just going to make that square root. We're going to write it under there first. We know we multiply our numerator, so that's going to be 7 times 54. Our denominators are going to be 6 times 28. Now that we're here, do we have anything in common between our numerators and our denominators? What would you say? Yep, so we see that 7 goes into 7 one times. How many times does 7 go into 28? Four times, right? How many times does 6 go into 6? How many times does 6 go into 54? Nine. 9. So in our numerator, we end up with 1 times 9, which is 9. In our denominator, we have 1 times 4, which is 4. This is the same thing as the square root of 9 over the square root of 4. We know 9 goes to 3 and 3. A buddy comes out. We're left with just 3. In our denominator, 4 goes to 2 and 2. A buddy comes out, we're left with just two. Three halves is what we're left with. 